بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم All societies defines roles and responsibilities for their members and uh, capitalism also teaches us roles and responsibilities by the means of certain myths which are created in the process of education. So to free our minds, we must unlearn these myths. So the central battleground is not the physical field, but the mind. Uh, the knowledge given by the Quran created a society which enlightened the world with knowledge for a thousand years. And it gave us some fundamental truths that all of us are built with hidden capabilities to achieve excellence. So an ideal society is one in which all members are encouraged to develop their potentials. Uh, now the ebb and flow of this knowledge across history led to many different patterns and variants of Islamic societies which can be lumped together in the name under the name Islamicate. The ways of creating an Islamic society, the knowledge was lost during the process of global conquest and colonization undertaken by Europe, which put 90% of the Islamic world, world under their control and destroyed our uh, basic patterns, frameworks of is Islamic societies and replaced them with Europeans ones. Today, the Islamic world is under the rule of colonized rulers with colonized minds who seek to recreate European patterns in Islamic societies using the patterns defined by European social science. So to create an Islamic society, the first step must be to unlearn the myths we have absorbed as part of our education. And this can be done on a personal and individual level. And we can spread the message to others we know. But for a collective solution for the Ummah, we need to create an alternative to Western education because that's the main means by which uh, minds are conditioned. And this course that we are conducting on Islamic economics is just one small piece of a large effort which is required to replace all the courses in our, in our university education one by one on a piecemeal basis. Uh, basically, we aim at replacing all of the social sciences by uh, the applications of fiqh to find Islamic solutions to problems facing the modern world. So many of the lessons that we need to learn at the personal level is that we are not commodities for sale in the market. In fact, our lives are infinitely precious. Allah Ta'ala Himself is the purchaser of our lives. Our goal is not to maximize pleasure in this world, but actually success will be determined on the Day of Judgment. The life on this world is not geared or oriented towards outcomes. Uh, rather, we have to participate in the struggle for the good. Whether or not we succeed is not uh, going to be part of our judgment. And similarly, wealth and poverty are not signs of the favor or disfavor of God. All of these are uh, counter to what we are taught to believe by capitalist education. The first step to freeing our own minds is to focus on the question of identity. Who, I, who am I? Uh, and capitalism teaches us that we are human resources for sale in the market, but we need to undo that and to learn how to become a human being and also learn the impacts of history on how it has shaped our minds. On a collective level, we have to understand that understanding of human beings, human behavior is the basis for understanding a society. And we have uh, developed over the past few decades a model of Islamic personality, a model of personality, human behavior, which is based on the our own intellectual tradition. And this provides us with a unique new basis on which to build, construct the entire uh, theory of the social sciences. Rajiv Shanturk has done uh, excellent work in uh, decolonizing social sciences, and this is listed here in some of the lectures and some of his um, talks on this subject. And uh, basically the goal is the same, replace Western social sciences by uh, fiqh applied to the solution of modern problems. One of the central myths of capitalism is that 
money is everything, our lives should be geared towards accumulation of wealth. Islam teaches us a very sophisticated attitude towards wealth that we should not desire wealth. The love of wealth is not uh, is harmful. And if uh, wealth is obtained with greed, then it causes harm. But if we are indifferent to the worldly and uh, worldly uh, materials, and we seek the pleasure of Allah, and wealth comes to us in this path, it will not cause us any harm, and it can cause us, it can bring us great benefits. So instead of orienting towards accumulating wealth, we should orient towards pursuing spiritual progress. So one of the interesting insights is that. Modern economics is basically the economics of the nafs ammara, the commanding soul. It tells us to obey the desires of the nafs. That is the goal. That is rationality. But uh, Islam is teaching us to make spiritual progress, to uh, shun the nafs ammara and move from it to nafs lawama and all on to nafs mutmainna. So economy of spiritual progress differs very much from the economy of the spiritually stunted, which modern economics teaches. Subhani rabbika rabbil azzati amma yisafoon. Wa salamun al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.